in Jesus name we pray and everybody said look at somebody and tell them your hour is coming look at somebody else and tell them your hour is coming yes I was thinking about going a different direction but the Holy Spirit would not release me from teaching on this because I really believe that somebody is shifting into a new hour how many of you believe that on this morning uh-huh there's an hour coming hour of favor hour of blessing but you know me I like to give you the conditions because there's a lot of buts and ifs in this Bible matter of fact verse 1 it says now it shall come to pass somebody say if it, that, that that's conditionally so He's saying, listen, I'm going to do my part because, you know, Isaiah 55 and 11, he said, my word will not return back void. Not only that, Jeremiah 1 and 12, one translation, it says that he watches over his word to perform it. That's why the Bible says that he's a man that he will not lie, nor the son of man will he repent. If God said it, that seals it. It's just that we have to do our part. And so the first thing I want to talk to you about this morning is number one, in order for you to step into that hour, you have to stay obedient. You have to stay obedient. The word of God says again, it says, now if it will, shall come to pass, if you, if you, somebody say, if you, diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. That word obey means to be in compliance. Somebody say compliance. Also, it means to submit to another's authority. Of course, we are submitted to God's authority. That word submit means we are yielded, that we are to give in to his authority. We got to get to a place where we entertain his ways and entertain his thoughts. And when you begin to entertain his ways and entertain his thoughts, that's when he begins to connect all the dots in your life. But one of the things that God is looking for for me and you is obedience. Even the word of God says obedience is better than sacrifice. Your obedience will cause you to be in a position where your hour will begin to change. Matter of fact, as I was driving in, the Holy Spirit said to tell you that if you stay obedient, that he will begin to change your condition. How many of you believe that at the nine o'clock service, that if you keep obeying God, he said, I will change your condition. It's your obedience that will cause God to move in your situation. So I want to encourage you that are here this morning, just stay obedient. You might be saying, Pastor, I'm already doing that. Praise the God. Kudos to you. Continue to operate in that spirit and then watch what God begins to do in your life. Speaking of that, look what he says. He says, if you obey my voice, then it says, he says in the latter part of verse one, he said that the Lord your God will set you high. Somebody say hi. He said, listen, if you just keep obeying me, I'm about to set some things up for you. How many of you believe that God is setting some things up even right now on your behalf? He said, I will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Look at that kind of favor that you will walk in based on just being obedient to God, just being in compliance. Then it goes on, look at the next verse. Then it goes on and it says, uh, it says, and all these blessings shall come upon you. Not only are blessings are gonna come upon you, he says, but they will overtake you. How many of you believe at the nine o'clock service that if you keep obeying his voice, that me and you are about to be overtaken in the favor of God, that blessing will overtake you. Somebody scream, overtake me. Uh-huh, oh, you will be overtaken. I'm like, Lord, I thank you for the overtaking blessing, the overtaking breakthrough, praise the Lord. Then it goes on, it says, look what the next verse says. Then it goes on and it says, blessed shall you be in the city. I like that. You will be blessed in your city and blessed shall you be in the country. Keep going. Then it says, blessed shall you be, be the fruit of your body. We can just pause right there. You being in compliance with God will cause you to even have, you, you shall, your, your body will be blessed. 
the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, offspring, your flocks. Keep going. Then it says, blessed shall you be your basket, your kneeling bowl. Keep going. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. When you come in, you bless. When you go out, you'll be blessed. Then it goes on and says, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. In other words, he's saying, you're going to even be around to see that. I love that. And then he says, that they shall come against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Then it says, the Lord will command that word command means that he will instruct the blessing on you and your storehouse and all to which you set your hand and will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Now, I want you to yeah, jump to 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens to give rain to your land. I like that. He says, I'm going to even open up treasures. Then he said, I'm going to make it rain in your life. How many of you believe that God can make it rain in your life? I know we in Phoenix, Arizona, and we haven't seen rain in a little while. Can I get a witness up in here? We've been dealing with 118, 120. It's been 100 in hell every day. But at the end of the day, that won't stop the rain of favor coming into your life. It won't stop the rain of blessing coming into your life. Do I have anybody, even though we're in the heated season, anybody expecting rain in this seat of a hot shit? I feel rain being released over your life. The rain of God blessing. He's about to rain favor in your life. He's about to rain breakthrough. If you receive it, somebody give God a rain praise. Look at somebody say, it's about to rain. Uh huh. I know it don't rain in July in Phoenix, but it's about to rain. We might not see natural rain, but I'm talking about rain of favor. Then it goes on, look what it says, look what it says. It says, I'm going to cause it to rain in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. That's why you got to keep working. Look at somebody and say, keep working. He said, I'm going to bless, it says, it says I, the, the, I will bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. I, I, I pray that over you this morning that you shall be the lender and not the borrower. Where's all my faith people at? That you got faith to believe that you will be the lender and not the borrower. Then it goes on, look at verse 13. It says, and the Lord will make you. I like that. He said, I'll make you. Somebody say, make you. The head and not the tail. You got to see yourself being the shot caller. You got to see yourself being the head. See, you got to see it in the spirit before it happens in the natural. I believe that's what happens to people that get discouraged all the time. It's because you're looking at everything from your natural eye. But if you begin to look from the spirit, you already know that it is done. For the Bible says in Psalm 37 and 4 that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. How many of you believe that at the nine o'clock service that God is releasing blessing based on your obedience based on you being in compliance somebody scream compliance he just said I just need you to be in compliance and I'm about to make you the head and not the tail then it goes on look what it says he said I'm gonna make you the head and not the tail above only Put it up, above only and not beneath. Somebody say above only. God wants to take you to a place where you're above only. You're above when it comes to your finances. You're above when it comes to your marriage. There it is right there. He says you shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed, somebody say heed, the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. Now, you got to remember back in that day and time, there was 10 commandments. 
God knew that we couldn't fulfill the 10, so he dumbed it down to two. It's in the Bible. He said, now the first commandment is love me with all your mind, body, soul, and spirit. And the second commandment, he said, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you can't do that, we need to make an altar call right now. He has dumbed that thing all the way down because even before that, it was about 600 and something laws. Then they dumbed it down to 10. That's why these black Israelites talking about they can fulfill 600 or something laws. Good luck. There ain't no way in the world you can do that. That's why God had to send Jesus so that he can justify us through the blood. I, where's all my justified people at? Declared righteous because of the blood. That's why the Bible even says, it says that if a man says that he is without sin, the Bible says he is a liar. So how in the world are you going to fulfill anything if you got an evil nature still? The Bible even says in Romans chapter 7 verse 18 that there the well of no good thing in the flesh was lets me know that everybody up in here still got an evil nature. And the only reason why you're able to keep that somewhat uh, 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 suppressed is through God's grace. Because grace will help you manage certain appetites. Can I get a witness? If it wasn't for the grace of God, you wouldn't even be where you are today. That's why Paul said, I am who I am because of the grace of God. He said, I labor more than all of you, yet not I, but the grace of God that's within me. We need to give God a grace, praise, because if it wasn't for the grace, you would have crumbled. If it wasn't for the grace, you would have blew your brains out. If it wasn't for the grace, you would have overdosed. Somebody give God a praise in this place. Look at somebody and say, it was his grace. It was his grace. And he gives us the grace to be able to keep those two commandments. He said, love me with all your mind, body, soul, spirit. Love your neighbor as you love yourself look at somebody and say i love me some me so if you love yourself that means you can love other people if you can't love yourself that means you can't love nobody you got to at least love yourself so you can love other people i didn't say you was going to like everybody <laughs> that's a whole nother topic but he said that if you obey me and keep my commandments you will be the head and not to tell, above only, and not beneath. Go to one more, I got several more, but we're gonna go to one more. Go to Isaiah 119. Now this is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, if, there I go again, conditionally, you are willing and obedient. Somebody say, and obedient. You shall, shall means without doubt, you will eat the good of the land. What a blessing that he said, listen, you're going to eat the good of the land, but I need you to be in compliance. I need you to keep obeying me. I need you to continue to stay submitted to my authority. And as long as you do that, I'm going to cause your hour to change. Matter of fact, your next hour, you will experience favor. You will be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. But I just need you to be compliant in this hour so I can set you up for your next hour. And because of time and because of this heat, I'm going to move on because I had three more scriptures to go to. Go to one more, one more. Go to uh, Ephesians 6 1. And we'll, we'll, Ephesians 6 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Keep going. He said, obey your parents. We talk about obedience, right? Being in compliance. Then it says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. We'll stop right there. Then it even goes on, talks about how you will have long life. I'm 51 years old and I still obey my mama. I would never call her Stella. I'd be, I be looking at some of my friends, they'd be calling their mom, like I got cousins that be calling their mama by their first name, I cringe, I'd be like, ooh. Now I name, I, I obey my mom so much that when I was a little kid, I told her, I'm gonna name one of my daughters after you. Cause I had a good mother. And she would laugh at me, she said, you gonna name one of your kids Stella, huh? I said, now I'm not gonna name them Stella May. 
I said, that's too country. I said, but I'm going to come up with a different middle name. So I named my daughter 28 years ago, Stella Desiree. That's a little more modern. Can I get a witness up here? <laughs> I said, I can't do Stella, man. But I say all that to say, even at 51, I still obey her. Even this week, I told her, I'm going to get you out of town this week. So she, she told me a while ago, baby, I need you to get me out of town. So guess what I'm going to be doing tomorrow? Getting her out of town. Because I'm obeying her. <laughs> Y'all like, he a grown man. But there's a blessing in your obedience. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So if you still got parents, keep obeying them. Even in your adult life, there's a blessing attached to you being obedient. Praise God. So number one, in order for your, you to come into your hour, you got to stay obedient, be in compliance. Amen. And the second thing I want to share with you is that you got to stay kingdom minded. You got to stay kingdom minded. Go to uh, 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 Luke real quick. Luke 9 and 1. Luke uh, uh, 9 and 1. It says, then, the, 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 then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases. And then look what verse 2 says, and he sent them to preach the kingdom. Somebody scream kingdom. And to heal the sick. He didn't send them to go preach tradition or religion. Don't ever, when somebody asks you, are religious, don't you agree with that? You say, no, I'm not religious. I have a relationship. I know a lot of the people that operate in religion but ain't got no relationship. Somebody scream relationship. There's a difference between religion and relationship. See, kingdom people have a relationship. God is able to trust them with his power and authority. And the Bible says that he told them, now go preach the kingdom. Somebody say kingdom one more time. The kingdom, it means his rule and his reign. That's why Jesus, when he came on the scene, he was misunderstood because he didn't preach tradition. He preached the kingdom. Jesus never came preaching and teaching tradition. And that's why people didn't like him. Amen. But let's get into this kingdom minded, because if we stay kingdom minded, we will step into our hour. Because you got to remember, you got to remember like the Pharisees, the Pharisees did not have a kingdom mentality. Matter of fact, when the woman got caught in the act of adultery, that tradition said, get your rocks and we're going to stone her to death. But Jesus corrected them in John 8, 7. He said, he without sin cast the first stone. See, that's a kingdom mentality. See, because when you're kingdom, you know how to have mercy toward people because you understand people are going to have human moments. Where's all my nine o'clockers that have had some human moments. You've had some hiccups in this life. And if you didn't raise your hand, you are lie because Romans 3.23 says all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Where's all the short people that, that you've come up short, but thank God you didn't stay down because the Bible says in Proverbs 24 and 16, a righteous man falleth seven times, but he gets back up. Where's all my get back up people at that you had some bounce back on the inside of you to say, I'm not going to stay here because in order to go to that place called there, I got to come out of my here. I realize I got value. I got worth. I can't stay here. I got to step out of my situation so I can step into my hour. If you receive that, somebody give God a shout. Look at somebody and say, you will step into your hour. And I like what Jesus said. See, the kingdom mindset, Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Even though the word of God says you were caught in the act of adultery. They was caught with their pants down. And they was going to let the man off the hook like he didn't have nothing to do with it. Oh, y'all know we live in a double standard world. But then he said, go. Go and sin no more. That word go means to withdraw. In other words, he was giving her instructions saying, you're better than that. Go, withdraw from that and sin no more. So he gave her a pass with instructions. 
See, that's a kingdom mentality. Even when I meet with people, I give you a pass, but I'm still going to give you instructions on how, so you don't find yourself back in the same condition because God is trying to change your hour, but you got to see yourself transforming so he can change your hour. I'm trying to help you get in compliance so you can see better days. Go to Matthew 6 and 10. Speaking of kingdom-minded, your kingdom come, your will be done. Somebody say on earth as it is in heaven. He's saying, I want you to have a kingdom life here on earth. I grew up in church where they would say things, I'm going to have my riches in heaven. God wants you to be rich now. God wants you to be blessed now. We always say his name is El Shaddai, which means he's the all-sufficient one, which means he's the God of somebody say more than enough. He's the God of more. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Don't try to, to see a lot of times, see, we, that's why Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people, they perish for lack of knowledge. I know pastors even right now that still don't believe in prosperity. I'm thinking, how are you leading a flock of people and you don't believe in prosperity when John 10, 10, he said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Even that word life in the Greek is the word zoe, Z-O-E, which means to have a God kind of like life. Then he just told us, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wants me and you to experience heaven here on earth. Even the Bible says, and we will sit in heavenly places. He wants you to experience the best. Let's not get into Psalm 118, verse 25. Please put that up. Psalm 118, verse 25. Look what it says. Psalm 118, verse 25. Say now, I pray, O Lord. I pray. Somebody say, sin now. Prosperity. I don't believe in a prosperity message. You know, people, people be saying that. Put up Genesis 26 and 12, just in case I got some religious people in here. Let me, let me help somebody. They might be like, oh, he's preaching about money. That, but that's what Jesus taught. Then Isaac sold in that land, and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Somebody say, the Lord blessed him. Uh-huh. And the man began to prosper, and he continued prospering until he became very, somebody say, very prosperous. What a part of that don't you understand? That is the will of God. See, when you got a kingdom mentality, you start calling in kingdom money. Lord, I, think I need kingdom favor. I need kingdom blessing. Hallelujah. So remember, stay kingdom minded. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. You know, ain't nobody broke in heaven. I was preaching a funeral here yesterday, and I talked about how he said, in my, in my, in my, he said, I have mansions for you in heaven. He said, in my house are what? Many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would not have told you. Then he said, I go and I prepare a place for you. You got to remember that this is not your permanent address. Your permanent address, of course, is in heaven. And he said, I go and prepare a place. So in other words, he's already set aside a mansion for you in heaven. But why are you here? He don't want you broke. Not if you got a kingdom mentality. Speaking of kingdom mentality, now go to Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first. Somebody say first. In other words, I need to be priority. My kingdom needs to be priority. I don't have a problem with you seeking an education, but the kingdom needs to be priority. I don't have a problem with you going and, and starting a new business. I don't have a problem with you going and getting your doctorate, your master's, and so on and so forth. But he says, seek first. Somebody say first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness, which means to be in right standing, right living. In other words, being in compliance, obeying him. Then it says, and all these things, somebody say things, shall be added to you. In other words, God is saying, I'm going to add.
add the car. I'm going to add the house. I'm going to add the wardrobe. But I need you to keep me first. If you keep me first, I will begin to add to you peace. I will begin to add to you joy. I'll begin to add to you blessing. If you know God is about to add to you in this next hour of your life, you need to give God a shout that God is about to add to your life. Not subtract but he's about to add if you believe that he's a God that can add to your life somebody give God a praise somebody scream Lord add to me but the key is keep him first keep him first and when you keep him first he'll begin to connect all the dots in your life when you keep him first he'll cross every T he'll dot every I Go to Luke 17, 21, and we'll move on to our final point. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom, somebody say the kingdom of God is within you. You got to know what's in you. You got to know the kingdom is in you. You need to be blessed that God puts you, sets you aside and puts you a part of a kingdom church. We don't believe in tradition at this church. And we've been misunderstood. I remember when I used to wear jerseys on Sunday, people thought I was going to hell. Because I was one of the first pastors to start showing up in jerseys and wearing jeans and tennis shoes on the stage. Some of my former Kojic people, Church of God in Christ, would be like, ooh, you, you just, you doing too much. You wearing jerseys at church now on Sunday. I said, see, that's the problem. When they missed, remember, remember when David was being elevated as king and Samuel was even confused because he saw all Samuel's other sons and he said, sure, yeah, the next king is here. And he saw all these men walking in there swole with big biceps and then God told him, I refuse all of them. And Samuel looked at Jesse and the father and he said, is there another? He said, oh yeah, David, he with the sheep. The one that was overlooked. So if you're here today and you've been overlooked, you in good company. Where's all my people at that's been overlooked at one time in your life, but you knew there was something great on the inside of you. And if nobody told you that nothing is great on the inside of you as your man of God, I'm telling you this morning that there's greatness on the inside of you. For the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you know there's something greater on the inside, somebody give God a kingdom praise in this place. Look at somebody and say there's something great on the inside of you. You got the kingdom living in you, breathing in you. You are not religious. You have a kingdom mentality. And because you have a kingdom mentality, God said, I'm about to change your hour. Even when I named this church kingdom, people were like, why are you naming your church kingdom? kingdom because that's all Jesus taught speaking of that go to Luke 4 and go to one more go to Luke go to Luke 440 let me prove to you that's all Jesus taught well, look what he said he said he said when the sun was setting all those who had anything that that were sick and various disease they brought to him and, and he laid his hands on every one of them and he healed them uh-huh keep going look what it says and then it says, and the demons also came out of many crying out saying, you are the Christ, the son of God. And he rebuked them and he did not allow them to speak for they knew that he was the Christ. Then it says, now when, now it was day, he departed and he went to, to a deserted place and the crowd sought him and they came to him and they tried. Somebody say tried. They tried to keep him from leaving. Then it says, but he said to them, I must. Preach the kingdom of God. He didn't say, I got to go preach religion. I got to go preach tradition. He said, I can't. I know y'all trying to handcuff me because y'all see I got the goods that I'm able to cast out demons and I'm able to do that because the kingdom of God lives within me. That's why some of you need to go lay hands on your kids. You got the kingdom on the inside. My, my baby got a demonic spirit. Well, lay hands on them prophesy over them speak into their life maybe if you start speaking into their life maybe their hour might change 
Shoot, my kids will tell you, I laid hands on all of them. Shoot, cursing stuff out of them. We tucked them in when they was babies. Amen. And then I remember after a while, I stopped tucking Zay in at about 10, 11. I'm like, you're getting grown now. You got to pray for yourself. <laughs> and that's weird. You start praying. They, you know, you go in there and tuck them in. You know, like I know somebody even now is still bathing their kid at 12. I'm like, what are you doing? He's 12. I got to make sure he get a bath. Well, give him the soap and the rag. Somebody scream delegation up in here. Some things you got to start delegating. Oh, they got a little quiet in here. Some of y'all are like, what's wrong with that? There's something wrong with that. It's time for him to become a man. Come on, somebody. Then you'll have him be a boy at 28 because you was always holding him. And what the Bible say about that in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, it says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things so number one your hour is coming stay obedient stay kingdom minded and because it's hot in this church I'm gonna give you the third point you got to stay positive the word positive means to be optimistic somebody say optimistic the word positive means to be confident and it means to be upbeat let me show you somebody in the Bible that was very positive, even in a bad situation. Go to 1 Samuel uh, uh, 17 and 33. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go up against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. Stay right there. Don't. Now, now, isn't it interesting, here it is, Saul, who's mentoring David at the time, basically tells him, get your head out the clouds, David. David, you don't have the skill set nor the ability. This man that you're talking about going up against, he'd been kicking butt and taking names from his youth. In other words, David, you don't have the experience to go toe to toe. But David did not allow what Saul said to him to discourage him. Because if you feel like you're going to make it through this journey called life and that somebody's not going to say something to you sideways, you got another thing coming. Somebody's going to say something sideways to you. How many people told me that my church wouldn't last two years and I'll be 19 on January the 2nd? What if I were to listen to my critics? I would have been out of business 17 years ago. But I knew that Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I knew I had the kingdom of God in me and that it, the kingdom that the Holy Spirit would aid me and assist me to lead people almost 19 years later. But he said, you are not able. That could have crippled David. That could have, he began to, be indecisive. But look what he says in the next verse. Look what he says in the next verse. Verse 34. It's coming. It's coming in Jesus' name. He said, but David said to Saul, that's why you always got to have a rebuttal to your critics. He rebuttals and says, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when he was, when a lion would, or bear came and took the lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and I struck it. I delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and I struck and I killed it. Your servant has killed lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. I love that he began to put this, this, this Philistine in the same category as that bear and that lion. Because if you have not faced any giants in your life yet, keep living. You will face some giants. Then he says, but I'm going to kill. He said, this, I'm a, he said, this Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. My point, people of God, is that through this, David stay positive. I need you. Whatever hour you are in right now, I need you to stay positive. 
I need you to be optimistic. I need you to stay confident. I need you to stay in compliance. I need you to keep obeying God. I need you to continue to have a kingdom mentality because your kingdom mentality will begin to change your hour. I'm good. Go to verse 25 because we already know he took off David's head. And so let's see how his hour changed. Because he was able to take off Goliath's head and then listen to Saul. He said, so the, the men of Israel said, have you seen the man who has come up? Surely he has come to defy the Israel. Uh, uh, you shall be that the man who kills him. The king will enrich him. Somebody say great riches. So whoever kills Goliath, your hour is going to change. Because you face this giant. Not only did you face the giant, you defeated the giant. So because you defeated that giant in your life, I'm going to change your hour. Now you're going to go from rags to riches. Then it goes on and he says, not only am I going to change your financial situation, it goes on and he says, uh, it shall that that man who kills him, uh, king will enrich him with great riches and he will give him his daughter. Let's pause right there. Now he wifed up. Got him a nice little situation. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. Not only after defeating this giant, his financial situ portfolio shifts. His hour begins to change. Now he got him a little situation. Not only that, it goes on and it says, and he will give his father's house, somebody say exemption, from taxes in Israel. Could you imagine? <laughs> That's why I thank God for kingdom, because we are a 501c3 tax exempt. We don't pay taxes. Now, we do pay payroll taxes, which I got 26 employees, and we get paid on the 5th and the 20th. So there's taxes, but as far as the, the whole amount, I'm grateful that the government still respects the church as an entity that touches communities. So we have been tax exempt. But I say all that to say, look at how David's hour changed. But he was the underdog, but because he was under God, God changed his hour. And I say all that to say that if you stay under God, if you stay obedient, if you stay kingdom minded, if you stay positive, if you stay confident, if you stay in compliance with God, God is about to change your hour. If you know God is about to change your hour, that if God did it for David, if God did it for Daniel, if God did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if God did it for the woman with the issue of blood if God did it for the man by the pool of Bethesda I'm telling you on today that God can change your hour if God can change Reggie Steele's hour God can change your hour because God is no respecter of person and I declare to you this morning eyes have not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him if you know God is arranging this next hour you need to stand on your feet and give God a 10 second praise in this place if you know your hour is about to change put those hands together and give God a shout touch two or three people and tell them your hour is coming your hour is coming your hour is coming I declare that God is about to cause rain to come into your life. That you will be above only and not beneath. You will be the head and not the tail. If you believe it, somebody give God a shout. God is about to command a blessing on your storehouse. If you receive it, somebody give God a five second praise in this place. Somebody scream, your hour is coming. Your hour is coming. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word. Let this word take root in our hearts, our mind, and our spirit. We're leaving here today more obedient than we've ever been. That we want to be in compliance. Because you said if we be willing and obedient, that we will eat the good of the land. 
And we thank you that we will continue to be kingdom minded, that we will keep the kingdom first and that we will stay positive, upbeat, confident, just like David was. I pray that over your people this morning. 